Okay, well I wanted to make this video for for all the people that were interested in John. I saw many people on the YouTube interested in John and John has moved on to the great beyond. And you can see him here, he's got the toothpick in the bottom of the cigar. And that was his little trick. And I never saw that before until John showed me that little trick. And that slows down the draw on the cigar and slows everything up and gives you a better a better draw on the cigar. So that was something that was a, a nice little tip that I learned from John. But I met John... I met John uh, just before the the uh, pandemic in the Philippines, and I saw him. I was in the supermarket, and I saw him standing, staring up, just staring upwards. And he was wearing this tremendous purple, flowery, paisley, some kind of shirt, beautiful. And I saw him, and I commented on the shirt. I said, my goodness, that's a heck of a shirt. And we started talking. I think his wife was in shopping. And uh, we just talked for about three hours straight. And I think that was probably the beginning of his wife being frustrated with me talking to him all the time. <laughs> because I was always... <laughs> You know, carrying on chatting with John, but John would always would always uh, chat with with many of the foreigners, and yeah, he was very well known in the circles, chatting with the guys, and and he was a part of just about every group in in Dumaguete in the Philippines, and and he'd make his rounds to the different places. You know, the why not for for a coffee, or then he'd he'd move over and he'd have a, a coffee at the uh, Sans Rival, or he might be at Casablanca, or he might even be at um, what was that other little place? I mean, he he just La French, La French, La French. Uh, no, he wasn't much of a La French guy, but Grump Grumpies, he was there sometimes. Um, there was a new place down in Bakong, but uh, what's that place? Smiley's, or just down the hill, where they have a big lunch. Uh, I'll think of it. But yeah, so John, John would would make the rounds, and then and then the other songs revolve behind behind the Robinsons is where we went a lot of times. In fact, I think this picture is there. And I think this was, yeah, this was a few months into the into the pandemic. So, so we met before the pandemic, and it was very similar to the trajectory of of my girlfriend and I. Because actually, I met John just before I met my girlfriend, and then and then I remember John <laughs> John telling me. Be careful, be careful, you know, be careful of these girls, you know, and and I I kinda had to tell him I remember walking down the hill and we talked a lot on the phone. And I remember talk saying that uh no, no, you don't understand. She's she's uh she's she's good and, and he I think we got disconnected, then we called back and he says, You know, I'm really sorry, you know, I'm I don't mean to be negative. I, I, I'm sorry. I, forgive me. And 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 he he could he could sense that John could sense. He could just sense. You know, he could sense that. Uh, you know that I was. I was convinced in in myself that. My my girl was a was a good, a good person, and he could. So he. He changed his mind about that, but and so so we we had a lot of coffee dates and uh, had cigars 
and he always he always had a cigar for me and uh, yeah we just talk we just talk about we just talk about art and we talk about different books and I'm trying to think of the name of those books uh, the 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 sailors uh, the sailor that was a movie actor in Sausalito what was that guy's name but he was also a sailor and he left his or he took his he was in a divorce with his with his wife and he he took his kids around the world on the boat I can't remember that guy's name but he was a famous actor back in the 30s and 40s and then there was another guy who used to write books Ah, the great, the great, what was it called? The Greatest Adventure. Rich, Ro, Robert Williams. The Greatest, The Great Adventure. Anyways, John was, John was a, a real conversationalist. I mean, he could, you could just, there were so many things to talk about. And he, he wouldn't have a cell phone because he didn't have a cell phone. So there's none of this. He, he had a, an old, Push button phone that he, but he, there was never any of this looking at his phone or anything like that. I mean, he'd he'd stare at you and and chat with you for for hours, with with so much energy that you could you could build a house, and and this guy was not like some oh poor you senior old fella. I mean, this guy was like sharp as the sh sharp healthy sharp. Sharp as the sharpest tack in the room. I mean, smarter and more aware than than anybody. I I really uh, have to admit I have ever known. <laughs> you know, for for a guy who is who is his, you know, 86 or uh, years old, he was so dialed in to to everything that is really relevant and. You know, sometimes it would shock me. I mean, the certain terminology that only people, people that are younger, you would think that only people that were younger would know, like blue pilled or red pilled, or you know, some of those new terms like uh, what is it, politically correct. I mean, but he would know every new, every new term. Uh, here you go. I bought those for you today. And then he gave us seeds, and when we went up to his house, and that one was, you know, and he would just give us things. It was Christmas time, and he gave us some old potatoes. Yeah, yeah. And he took me and bought me a pair of shoes at Christmas time. And then, yeah, so he bought me this really nice pair of new shoes, and then he came down and brought me his old brown sort of boat shoes, beautiful leather shoes, and, and, yeah, then, then his son, his son died, and I remember being, I was up at his house, and it was raining, and, and, yeah, I painted the, the son's picture, and then I gave it to him, yeah, but really, John was, was like my advisor in so many ways because he knew <laughs> I remember when I first the first day I met him he said he said something like you gotta get out of here you gotta get out of the Philippines <laughs> oh, he kept saying that you know the whole time that I knew him you gotta get out of here it's like the, the Titanic he says imagine you're on the deck of the Titanic well that's what this is <laughs> And, of course, I'd say, well, John, but you're still here. He said, I know, but, you know, I've got, but I want to, I might want to go somewhere too, maybe go to, and so he was always saying that, and he was always helping me plot and plan certain things, and, and uh, he was so compassionate and the times when I was really down and he would say you know just just care you know just uh huh be strong yeah he would say that he'd say 
be strong, be strong, and and both of you, and and just paint, and he would encourage my girlfriend to paint and keep painting, and just you know be focused and and just paint and try not to to stress out and and uh, yeah he he had this very empathetic and he would take you he would make you his whole focus now i'm still wondering how people do that because how do you get in so inside of somebody else's story now that's what it feels like to me it feels like he's completely inside my story trying to help me out and it's not everybody that can really do that or wants to do that or can do that and uh, so but he had he had this great experience of being in the Philippines for for so long so he was able to you know give advice especially here and in our situation and with our relationship when we were trying to get married I can't tell you how many times we talked on the phone about you know how are we going to get married and he would say he would say yeah do you try you got to do this or try that or maybe you could do this maybe you could I mean he would we'd go through plan A plan B plan C plan D and and he'd go through every scenario and then he'd say well let me think about it and then the next day he he I got it I got it I got it and he was right there he wouldn't he'd just pick up right where he left off the next day I mean he'd and he'd have the answer for you and he'd tell you exactly what you needed to do it was like it was like it was on his mind like from uh, you know he could just plug right back into the dialogue and you're going Oh, oh, and then one day he says, "I've got it." He, he he called me blood, or he called me blood. He said, "Blood, I, blood, I got it." There's a little town in Norway called Svalbard. Svalbard. It's it's an independent place. You can go there. Da da da. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, really, John? <laughs> and then I'm checking it out, and it's like this. Some sort of like a science station or some kind of a, you know, like a science. I don't know what that place is. It's like cold and, but he was right. I mean, everything he said was right. It's some kind of a, of a free sovereign nation and, uh, you know, and he'd talk about these different islands and he'd talk about Easter Island. He was there and he'd talk about, you could go to the East Timor and he would tell me about East Tim. Timor, T-I-M-O-R, and he knew about all the islands, and and uh, he'd say, wow, maybe, you know, in the middle of the pandemic, maybe you should go to, try to go to Fiji, and you can get a, you can get a residency there, and you can tell him you're a painter, and your wife can come, and his, I mean, he would, these elaborate plans and schemes he would come up with, and it was great, because he was right there, he was right there in it with you, you know, uh, and and the times that were were so sad. Yeah, he would. Yeah, he just he just cheered me up because he. That's the that's the thing about the 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 age and the wisdom of somebody that that they it's like a fine wine. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, 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 right. Right. Yeah, talking about relationships, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he'd he'd give me advice about Yeah, just uh, she's she she's try she's da 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 or she, you know, just just try to comfort each other and da da da. So, but uh, the only, I only saw him, I only saw him get upset one time, and that one time, and I can kind of understand it, because this guy was, 
he was being cheeky, let's face it, you know, and it, it, it doesn't really matter where you are in the world, nobody really wants to be cheeked uh, by anybody, it's not about the Philippines, it's not about a certain place, it's just about somebody trying to pull a fast one right in front of your face, right? So we were sitting there at at um, Sans Rival in in Dumaguete, and we were having coffee. And I ordered. Uh, we both ordered iced coffees. And the guy brings the coffees, one for me and one for John. I think uh, Mike was there. Mike had a tea, maybe. And and John tastes, and he goes, uh. Is there sugar in this? And the guy said, mm, yeah, I think it's uh, sugar. And John says, now I asked for no sugar. And he said to me too, he says, yours has sugar? I said, mm, yeah, I think so. So he puts him back on the train. He says, send him back. I didn't ask for sugar. I don't want sugar. And we see the guy, the waiter, he kind of goes, he kind of goes in the back, but then comes right back out. And John knew, I think John John had been watching him more than me, because I was talking to Mike, and, and John, and John, were you there that day? No. And John, yeah, yeah, John kept an eye on that guy. Yeah, John's eyes were very sharp. Yeah, 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 he was, he was very aware. So then he saw this, the, the waiter. He's, yeah, he could read. He could read your. He could sense. It, he was so alert. So then, then the the waiter comes back and basically brings the same glass. I think it's where, because I could taste it too. And John said, "Are you some kind of a wise guy?" <laughs> I thought it was. It was so New York, you know. What are you, some kind of a wise guy? You think that's funny? And I know what he goes, I know what you're doing. And you'd better knock it off right now. Do you understand me? And he just put that guy in his place. And, and you know, it was a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit, uh, yeah, yeah, he's strict. But, you know, he was, he was trying to teach the guy a lesson. So, so. Yeah, that was that was that, and uh, I'm trying to think of that uh, Sparky's. What was the name of that that other restaurant that people used to go to? Sparky's. I don't know. I'm sure. I'm sure you guys out there in La La Land will remember the place uh, down the hill, on the way up to Valencia. It's on the right. I can't remember the name of that place, but so. So uh, we did. I think he's walking down to the house, and then we take a motorcycle, and I think we walk with him. Would his wa he wanna buy some cigar? I think he's walking that day, and then he wanna walk with us. Or we take that motorcycle. Valencia? Yeah, and I'm Valencia, and he said, I want to buy some cigar right over there and up the hill. And then I think we bring we bring our motorcycle, we take the motorcycle, and he's walking only, but. You never found him, did you? It's, he's in the road, walking. You found him? Uh. No, uh, he used to go up to this uh, this place up in the hill in Valencia and get some some cigars. The woman would roll up the leaves and and he'd smoke those cigars and and uh, and then there was the dog, Senior Guapo, the dog that he rescued from. I guess they were beating the dog. So Guapo, I'm not sure where Guapo is now, but but. Um, yeah, so, yeah, he, he, it's funny because he was like, he, he would sometimes talk about the things that I told him about me, and he would, and he would say, 
you know, you 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 were the one who who played guitar out there, or played ukulele out there in Hawaii and and did all those things and and be strong because you know look at all the things you accomplished and da 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 and yeah, you, you I he trying to make me you know uh, say nice things I said oh yeah thanks John but he I really think that he was the real uh, humanitarian because uh, he was you know really interested in in other people's I don't know I get I guess just uh Chemo, yeah, chemo. We 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 had a good chemo. John had this word, uh, chemo, and some of other some of John's other phrases are he chemo. Us, he gave us gave us lots of food and stuff. Yeah, kiwis, kiwis. Here's another one of his phrases, mm, chemo. You got to have good chemo. I said that to somebody the other day, and they were like, chemo? What do you mean chemo? Like chemotherapy? I said, no, no, no. Chemo is like chemistry. And then you got to get your, uh, get some gauge. <laughs> gauge. <laughs> gauge is sort of like, you know, your your trip. That was another one of his words, trip. Uh, and uh, gauge is sort of like, you know, like for a guy who likes to drink, your gauge is a bottle of whiskey. That's your gauge. Your gauge is your your fix. The thing. You know, if you're a, if you're an alcoholic, your gauge is alcohol, right? If you're if you're a smoker, your gauge is cigarettes. You gotta get your gauge. talk about red horse like uh, is it Mara where are you now where are where we where are you where, what are you doing like up to tell you where I said we're drinking beer and then it's like something that he love he has uh, the words that he tell you that you both can relate and can laugh laughing about a horse what is that? I can't remember that night. We were on the rooftop. And uh, don't be... Your hold your horses. Yeah. You can't beat a red horse. Oh, you can't beat a red horse. Yeah. That's the saying is you can't beat a dead horse. You can't beat a dead horse. You can't beat... You can't beat a red horse. Meaning... You can't get better than a red horse because red horse is the best. You can't beat a red horse. You can, or the saying is you can't beat, hit. You can't hit. Anyway, that's called some like an idiom or something like that. But but uh, I'm going to go ahead and smoke some tobacco right now in honor of John. Yeah. There. So, gotta light that up there. So we're almost to the end of the video, but there's a lot of a lot of John's words in my mind uh, over the last two years. I mean, I think we we talked almost every day. We talked on the phone almost every day. I would say we talked sometimes for about an hour. And uh, I'm sure that, I'm sure that, uh, you know, I'm sure that some of my, my issues were a little heavy at times. You know, I would, I'd, you know, probably get boring sometimes, always trying to figure out. You know, I didn't I didn't try to make it all about me all the time but he was always he was always very 
it didn't seem like it was about me. It just seemed like it was about us and and what we were going to do and what's the future going to be like and how are we going to handle, you know, the situation and stuff. And, and, uh, but yeah, he knew a lot about natural food and herbs and medicines and, and stuff like that. And, and, uh, he read me some of his poetry, which he's real proud of. And I have a video somewhere. If I can find it, I'll, I'll post it, but. What was what was the last part of that poem? Something about carried on the on the f on the foam carried by the foam. Anyways, I'll try to get that. But today it kind of really hit me that that John was was not able to be reached by the phone and that was really that was really a bummer because I realized that there's just nobody, nobody certainly here that we know that has the kind of history that John does being here in the Philippines and being, being 86 years old and having the perspective and the wisdom that he has and, and then also knowing us and knowing our situation. And so, yeah, I lost my, my advisor my closest advisor and I mean of you know we have advisors in our life along the way and things like that but the last moment that I talked to John was oh I wish I would have said love you blade but I don't think I did this time I normally normally I say love you love you bro love you man love you uh, but mm, he was in the hospital, and then I I said, "Well, look, I'm gonna call you back. I'm gonna I'm gonna ring up such and such, and then I'm gonna call you back." I said, "Are you gonna answer the phone? Are you sure?" He says, "Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna answer it." And that was uh, probably a couple days before before the end, and then uh, yeah. I was going to ring him back. I've <laughs> that's the thing, you know, you always think you always think you're going to ring that person back and and uh what if it really teaches you that what you say or what you don't say you could regret because yeah. Yeah, nobody answered the phone. I rang back several times, but that was that was uh that was the last time, so yeah. So, but but I I am gonna I am inspired by John to to continue writing and to work on my my book, which which he has inspired me to 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 write, and I have the title. Thanks to John. I'm not gonna tell you that right now, but. I have the title, and that was John's title, and I love it. And I haven't seen that title for a book anywhere. And, and so, yeah, for now, I just I just have to think to myself, well, what would what would John say about that? But his perspective was so fascinating because. He could feel the shifts of time. He could feel the shifts of energy. And his answer would be, you know, the new day would come. And, and John would, he knew the reality of the, situ of, of the situation of the world. But he would also have this, this silver lining perspective in there. And, and he could just give you one phrase that would, would just change your day. Well, just one phrase. And I'd say... Ah, oh, John. Oh man, I just I needed to hear that. Thank you so much. It was just perfect. And he had this way of, don't give up. He'd say, don't give up, Blade. You know, don't, don't give up. And he'd say, you know, the power of the human spirit is, is such a strong force. And and he and. Uh, 
then he'd go off to, you know, talking about how I'm a humanitarian, you know, <laughs> like, you're an, you're an artist, you're a humanitarian, you know, and, you know, and, you know, I think about that and, um, <laughs> yeah, it's funny. It's, it's he, 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 he was the one who was, uh, you know, the one listening to my problems, you know, so, but I appreciated those words coming from him and, and, um, John listening to me when, no? Yeah. So tomorrow what we've decided to do is we're going to put John's poem, if I can find it on the, on the internet, I'm going to put the poem, I got to plug this thing in before it dies. I'm going to put the po- we're going to put the poem in a in a bottle in a wine bottle because John did like wine and he had all these really good wines from the Philippines and he he really wasn't much of a coffee drinker but he did like the native coffee and let's see he'd always be drinking water he always have a bottle of water in his back pocket can you can you plug here no I can do it over here so we'll, we'll 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 do some we'll do some little ritual uh, tomorrow in the sea, and then we'll send it out. We'll send it out on the on the foam of of tide or whatever his poem was, and we'll give him a, a send off. And I do. We'll burn some tobacco and we'll say a prayer and stuff like that. <laughs> what? Burn some tobacco. Yeah, we'll put the ashes of the tobacco in the bottle and then we'll put his poem inside the bottle. I gotta find that poem. If anybody else out there has that poem, because. I think I have it. I, I have a, a video of his in one of my flash drives. So hopefully I've got that poem. He was speaking the poem. And hopefully I'll get that and then I'll put that uh, up on the YouTube here. But uh, we are but a speck of time on this on the foam of time. Something we are but a speck. We are but of we are but a speck of inspiration on the foam of time. On the foam of time, something, something like that. But yeah, he really, he really liked that poem, and and he is a hat guy. He loves those hats, and he loved that blue shirt. He's always, he's always he wore that blue shirt quite a lot. But but uh, I think I'm going to get into colorful shirts. What do you think? Aren't colorful colorful shirts are nicer than just a white T-shirt, right? What do you think? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Right, right, right. right. Yeah, he bought a nice shirt. Yeah, I'll bet online we could find some. They didn't buy cheap, no. Well, he had. And the hanger, yeah. Yeah, he bought some good clothes. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to say, I just want to say this about John that I think I think one of the reasons why I got along with John was because well, I don't I don't I never I never saw John as cuz I've had a lot of older friends in my life from before that most of my friends were always like a lot older than me so it's sort of a normal thing for me to have friends that are that are older than me and so I didn't see I never saw John as some like you know senior citizen I mean it's, you know some people do they treat people differently if they're if they're older but I, I, I saw him as like a as like a peer like a guy who's my age <laughs> You know, because that's the way he acted. He was just this cool, really cool guy. 
And so I never once, and I think he also picked up on that. He didn't, he didn't think that I was treating him as some, you know, that I'm just sort of like you know, treating him as, as, as something, uh, you know, like an antique or, or something like that. I never, ever, I completely saw that this guy is grounded and, and, and he's completely there and he's completely, you know, he's more sane than, than anybody I could find. <laughs> and so, you know, I'm sure a lot of other people thought, this guy is just, you know, wacky. But for me, he's like the most sane person uh, I've ever met. And he's got all those qualities of, of the old times, you know, the... You know, sometimes we'd be on the phone and he's like blaring like some old Ella Fitzgerald or something. He's like, yeah, man, I'm having a, I'm enjoying life. You know, you just got to relax and just put on some good music. And, and and apparently he was, you know, he's like listening to some jazz music in the back. And he's, you know, I wanted to say, hey, John, can you just turn that down a little bit? I can't, I can't, I can't hear you. You know, it's like... And uh, so, all right, well, that's it for this video. So I hope I hope you enjoyed that. And my friendship with John was very, very special. And so at least at least I I really connected with with John and I and I have his I have his voice in in my ear and I can I can. I can understand, huh? Yeah, I can't believe he died either. I mean, yesterday uh, or this morning, I it kind of, I had this, yeah, I had this sort of empty feeling. Yeah, I was just staring out at the sea this morning like, oh my gosh, it's like, it's just this void. This person's just gone. You can't, you can't, it's not a part of your reality anymore. And then, and then you're alone. So, you know what? Life is about people. I know, I know he would, he would say that. Life is about people. And like in the movie, Into the Wild, when he goes, the, the character of the movie goes up to the trailer and wants to be alone. And in the end, he dies because he ate poison. And he writes in his diary as he's dying, starving to death. He says, like says something like I was wrong life is meant to be shared and anyhow so all right blood okay uh see you in the morning we're gonna send out your poem uh love you bro and uh thanks everybody for tuning in see ya peace <laughs>